Well, hello, Space Nuts, and welcome to another edition of the Flat Earth Workshop Build Series. In 1958, NASA was formed. It's over 50 years old now, and the first of these heroes were the Mercury 7 astronauts, the most vetted human beings in history. Of these original seven astronauts, six would fly in Mercury, three would fly in Gemini, and one would walk on the moon. They went through incredible tests, all to wear this suit, the Navy Mark IV made by Goodrich. This suit was exactly what the public was waiting for. It was shiny, it looked out of this world. However, it wasn't really a very sophisticated suit compared to what we have today. It was not inflated in space once because it made it very difficult to work in space when it was all inflated like a balloon. The Mercury spacecraft's cabin was pressurized and turned out to have an excellent safety record. And now it's decision time. Will you choose the original G.I. Joe foil spacesuit from around 1965, or will you choose the reissue suit from 1995? Both are available on eBay. Now you need to go to Shapeways, the Flat Earth Workshop, and get these parts. The Mercury helmet and the Mercury helmet visor. Here's a little paint scheme so you know how it all goes together to look like the actual flown Mercury helmet that's on the right. I believe that this Mercury helmet in 1 6 scale is the most accurate one available. I know that because I modeled it myself from one that I saw at the Kansas Cosmosphere that was flown in Mercury. On the Shapeway store, you'll also need to get these parts, the Mercury Suit Fittings Kit and the NASA Helmet Rotation Bearing that we'll be using later. Also, the Helmet Restraint and the NASA Portable Cooling Unit. There were two cooling units that were used during the Mercury program. One changed quite a bit during the program. Later on, it looked like this later version. You'll also need to get the boots and the ventilator hose from the G.I. Joe reissue kit, and these SR-71 pilot gloves from the Damn Toys kit, some athletic tape, and some flat waxed shoelaces. You'll need a head sculpt that doesn't look like a famous person, it needs to look like the astronaut himself. At the Kansas Cosmosphere, this was Wally Shiraz's Mercury suit. And we see the tremendous details in each part of this suit. And this is what we're trying to attain. When you see a screw or you see a graphic, you want to make that real on your sixth scale action figure. In these areas where you see applique materials placed in, we're going to be using some things that look very similar to them. We'll use athletic tape. We're going to also use pieces from the 1995 reissue suit that work really well to look like the real thing. Spacesuit gloves are the most difficult and I think one of the most interesting things about vintage gear. And who doesn't love the details on a spacesuit helmet? We're going to try to recreate these all the way down to the plexiglass strips. Now you can purchase vintage G.I. Joe gear on eBay and other sites and truthfully it's not very expensive. The one that I've decided to use here is the original G.I. Joe outfit from 1965 because it used real foil on the outside. You can find these for as little as $15 for just the suit. Now you got to make sure it has three zippers. Now you're going to have to find yourself some machinist double-sided tape because that's the way we're going to make these suits fit well. You fold over the two parts and put the tape right in between. Let's look at it again. Fold, place the tape between, and then press. And it holds as though it was sewn. It's really much better to do this tailoring while the suit is on the body. The space boots look really good from the G.I. Joe, however, we can make them better. Just clip off some little strips of athletic tape with a uh, size 11 X-Acto blade, put them into shape, and uh, they look super. The suit fittings are applied now. We see on the original suit, they look very detailed. We're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use 1995 reissue material to use as the backing for this fitting. The glove bearings look like this as they come from Shapeway. And remember, you'll probably have to trim the sleeves a little bit because the proper positioning of the bearing is about a third of the way up the arm. Five millimeter shoelace works great for any webbing and all you have to do to attach it is use super glue. It seems that it's getting more difficult to find the damn toys 
uh, SR71 gloves you see on the left. And uh, if they are difficult, you can also make your own. Use athletic cloth tape and wrap it around a hand. Here's a weathered version of it as an example. Also, we have some jeweled wire that you can buy from any craft store. And this is used to hold on the helmet bearing as is shown right here. Just thread the wire through the helmet restraint. You have two choices about suit ventilators. Uh, you can use this one that's provided with the G.I. Joe, not very accurate, or this one which is very accurate from the Flat Earth Workshop on Shapeways. The more boxy ventilator was used early in the Mercury program, and the more sleek one was used in Mercury and Gemini and beginning Apollo. Well, you've listened to the history, you've studied the pictures, you've purchased the parts, and you've put them together very carefully, and this is how your 12-inch Mercury astronaut should appear. And a beautiful case only makes it more awesome. Now, I gotta warn you, once you build one of these astronaut figures, it can be very habit-forming. And this beautiful row of scale astronauts will be featured one by one in upcoming Flat Earth Workshop segments, so make sure you subscribe and you press that little bell to make sure you get alerted each time a new video goes up.